This video is sponsored by Stream. Stream helps you to build scalable chat and activity feeds for your application. Stream also takes care of security hosting and scaling so you can focus more on the functionality and building high quality applications. Check out their SDKs for many different platforms. They have iOS with Swift and iOS with Swift UI, Flutter, Android, React, React Native, and so much more. To learn more about Stream, check the link in the description for more information. In this video, you are going to learn how to inject multiple environment objects in your Swift UI application. Now, you might be wondering why would you ever want to do that? Why would you want to inject multiple global environment objects? So let's go ahead and take a look at an example where we will need multiple objects. So let's say that we are building a very simple counter application. It's always a good idea to start with a very simple thing just to understand that why do we need and why do we do things uh, like the way that we are doing. Okay, so we will have a text view and to increment the counter, we will have the increment button, which will increment the global state. Okay, in order to increment the global state, we need to create some sort of a global state. And I'm just going to create it inside this file, but you can create it in any other file. It's going to be an observable object. And over here, I'm just going to go ahead and create a published property, which will be count. It will be integer, and that's our global state. So we have a count that we have introduced, and that will be serving as a global state so other views can use it. In order to use the app state, I would have to go over here and say environment object var app state and then call app state. Let's go ahead and remove or close this basically the pane because uh, we won't really be needing that for this example. Okay. So we have the app state. The app state still needs to be injected into the preview if you're doing something with a preview, or it has to be injected into the actual application. So I'm going to go back to my actual app file and call environment object and simply going to inject the app state. This will be the global state injected into the content view and all the different views that are inside or are children of content view. Content view right now is the root. So basically everyone will be able to use the app state, which is a global object. If I want to increment the global state, I can simply say app state dot count and plus equals to one. Since we are using app state over here, we can go ahead and access the value app state dot count. This means that Every single time we are going to increment the state, it is going to re-render the view. So this content view is going to re-render and show us the updated count. And just to see that if the view is actually re-rendering, you can always use the print changes statement. So I can go ahead and add that. And this will let us know that if the view is being re-rendered or not. I'm going to go ahead and run it in the simulator so that we can see that when the view is getting re-rendered. So let's go ahead and run it. Okay. And we're going to wait for the screen to show up. And once it shows up, there we go. So first thing we note is that the content view is getting rendered. So that's great. Now, if I click on increment, you can see the content view gets incremented every single time I click on the increment button. So it looks like it's working perfectly fine. Okay, great. The other thing that I wanted to do is I want to create another view which will be called a light bulb view. So we can go ahead and create it over here. Light bulb view. Okay. The light bulb view will have a toggle and you can change the toggle. You can do a toggle on, toggle off, and we will also would like to change the image. All right, 
which will simply represent if the light is on or not. So I'm going to create the view and we can go ahead and create a VStack. Inside the VStack, I'm going to use an image. For starting out, I'm just going to say light bulb. We will change that later. And foreground color, you can set it to anything you want. So foreground color can be yellow. That's fine. And then we will have a toggle. Now for this toggle, what we are going to do is going to add another global state. Just like the count, I'm going to add another global state, which is going to be controlling the values inside the light bulb view. So I'm just going to go over here, create another published property. Is on boolean equals to false. Okay, so now we have two values, count and is on, and both of them are part of the global state. So now if I go over here into my light bulb, I will go ahead and say environment object var and then app state, and then we can get the app state. Great. Now is on or the bindable thing can be replaced by our app state dot is on and label if you want to put any label that's perfectly fine. I'm just going to return the empty view and make it fixed size so it is kind of like small. If you want to check it out, uh, we can go ahead and add the light bulb right there. So you'll be able to see how it actually looks like. And we can look in the canvas if you want. It's going to hopefully show you what the light bulb actually looks like. Uh, but also make sure if you're using Canvas that you are injecting something over here, like the environment object. So I'm going to go ahead and inject the app state. Perfect. And this is how it looks like. You can see that this is how your application is looking right, right now. Okay. So now is a very important question. If I have a light bulb over here, all right, a light bulb is inside the content view. Inside the content view, I do have access to the global state, and the thing that I'm changing in the global state is only the count. I'm not changing the is on property, I'm just changing the count. Do you think that the light bulb will also get re rendered or not? In this code, we are not even using the count property. You can see that although I'm using the app state, using environment object, I'm not using displaying the count anywhere. Let's go ahead and put right over here, we're going to put the print changes so that we can find out that if we increase the count, if we increment the count, does it also re render the light bulb view or not? Let's go ahead and run it. Okay, so currently you can see that the content view and the light bulb both are getting rendered, which is fine because this is the first time they're both getting displayed. Now, if I'm going to go ahead and increment, you can see that the light bulb is still getting rendered, even though we're not really doing anything with the light bulb. So why exactly is this getting rendered? So that is a problem if you're using a single state and not dividing it into multiple slices of the state. Now, this is a very special situation because the content view as well as the light bulb view both are trying to get access to the app state. And whenever the app state actually changes, they both get re rendered, even though light bulb is not really doing anything with the change property of the count. It's only interested in the is on property. So how can we do this? How can we make sure that the light bulb, even though it's a global state, is not rendering when somebody is changing the count? All right, so let's go ahead and see how we can resolve this issue. The first thing we're going to do is instead of one giant app state, we can create slices of the state. So I'm going to go ahead and say count state observable object. And the count state will only be responsible for updating the count. So we're going to just copy this over here. 
The same thing is going to happen for the light bulb state. And the light bulb state will only be responsible for handling everything to do, anything to do with the light bulb, which is simply is on property. So now the question is, what will be inside the actual app state? Well, we're going to go ahead and create instances of the count state as well as the light bulb state. I'm going to go ahead and create that. There we go. Uh, make sure that both of them are not marked with published. We are not really marking these things with published. We'll be using the count state and the light bulb state. Now, obviously, our content view doesn't like it. It's saying that, hey, app state does not really have a count property. This is where we will simply change this environment object from app state to count state because the content view is only interested in the count state. It has no interest in the light bulb state or the parent state. So now we can actually use the count state. There we go. And the same goes for our light bulb. The light bulb is only interested in the light bulb state. And this will be the light bulb state. We can go ahead and make sure that we are using the light bulb state. There we go. Okay, great. And finally, what we need to do is we need to make sure that we are injecting it properly because right now you can see the only thing getting injected is the app state. So let's go ahead and see how we can inject something. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and create app state, which will be app state. Now you can inject app state, that's perfectly fine. I mean, if maybe app state has some properties that somebody wants to uh, subscribe to, that's perfectly fine. But you can also go ahead and uh, add more environment variables. So app dot count state and dot environment where we are saying app state dot light bulb state. So now we will have access to all three of them. Some of the views may be uh, subscribing to the app state, although app state, as you can see, it doesn't really have any published property, but maybe in the future it will. Okay. So now let's go ahead and run this again. So after making the change, we run it again. The first time you can obviously see that the light bulb and the content view, both of them are getting fired. Now, if I go ahead and say increment, only content view gets fired because that's the only one that's getting changed. All right. If I go ahead and do this part, then you can see only the light bulb is getting fired. Now, to finish it off, you, if you want, we can go ahead and definitely change the code to make the light bulb also work. So I can go ahead over here and change it to that the light bulb actually turns on and off. There we go. So this idea of injecting multiple states and making sure that your views are only accessing or re-rendering when the small slice of the state is changing can be very beneficial for large applications where you don't really want to refresh the entire view just because it was part or it was trying to access the environment state or just part of uh, some other uh, view that was also interested in accessing environment state but not using it, all right? So this technique will definitely help you in the future that how you can inject multiple environment objects in a Swift UI application.